In the previous video, we looked at the basics of Hooke's Law, springs and things like that. And we looked at the idea that, well, f equals to kx for any spring if it obeys Hooke's Law. And this is what we call Hooke's Law. We also looked at how to calculate the energy in a spring, a recap of what we learned in the previous chapter. Okay, So work done to extend a spring is half kx squared also known as the elastic potential, or in the new term, we looked at what we call the strain energy. Ooh, what is that? Strain energy. Before I go into today's goals, I need to remind you that the restoring force of a spring, let's say this F, is not constant throughout. Now. It depends on the extension. So maybe this spring is trying to go back to its original shape that is like this short on it. And if you stretch it out really far, it's going to have a very big restoring force because the bigger the extension, the bigger the force. Okay, so that's all about Hooke's Law. Today, we're going to look at what we call the Young's Modulus. We're going to look at terms, stress strains, and Young Modulus. What is Young Modulus? Well, you should be able to answer that question by the end of this video. Stress strain and Young Modulus. It's kind of something new. But it's actually an upgrade of your understanding of springs and Hooke's law. But now, it's not only for springs, it's for all kinds of materials and situations. Young modulus, what is it? Well, what was it for, for again? Huh? Well, in Hooke's law, we measured the stiffness of a string with a force constant k. Right? So f equals kx. If the k is very big, wow. How would that affect the force and the extension? Larger k means you extend a very big force, it only, ex only extends a little bit, so it's very stiff, that's why we call it. But the problem is, with this k stuff, it depends on the size of the spring, the shape of the spring, the material of the spring. Is it a narrow spring like this, or is it a one that's very, very thick, where each coil is like, wow, very, very fat. It depends. It could be metal, same metal spring, but different K values. What if there's another constant to measure stiffness of material? Well, people came up with it. It's called the Young's modulus. Young's modulus, also known as the constant, or I should say the variable constant, the alphabet E, is called the Young's modulus. So look at this table. There's a whole bunch of different materials with a certain Young modulus. For steel, wow, young modulus very big, 210. Copper, 120. Bone, 18. Plastic, wow, getting smaller and smaller. Do you see, can you guess a pattern based on the material and the young modulus? You look at mild steel, uh, what is steel? I don't have steel, but I do have my good old aluminium rod. Give me a second. Ugh. So this is kind of one of the metals. Probably has a very high young modulus. If I want to compress it, if I want to stretch it, if I want to bend it, it's quite stiff. That's what it means by stiffness. How does it change when I apply a force? You go down to copper. Copper is like a wire. I guess your wire could work. Uh, harder copper is definitely harder. What else do we have? Bone. Ooh, bones. Do our bones bend if we press down on it? Well, it does a little bit, not as much. But we'll see. A bone stiff, but not as stiff as steel. So that's why if, if you've never broken a bone, people call you bones of steel. Because wow, your bone's very stiff. Then you look to plastic rubber. You got all those squishy, squishy toys. I don't think I have any here. But rubber is not very stiff, as you can imagine. You can bend rubber. You can squash it. It deforms. You can stretch it. There's a lot of change in length for a certain amount of force. So that's why it means stiffness. So the higher you go, more stiff it is. And one thing to note is, Young's modulus is property for a material. This is, I don't don't really care what shy what the shy, what size what shape. You you care more about the material. Is it steel? Is it rubber? So Young's modulus is tied to material, not so much to shape and size, like how the spring constant is. Final clarification: strength and stiffness. Stiffness, we really talk about that, how much it will change uh, the shape or the, the length will change under force. Strength, 
we will look about this look at this a uh, little later but strength is how much force it can withstand before i go back to original shape for example if you bend something out of shape maybe it's not going to go back then not very strong okay strength in physics that's the difference between both before we talk about young sponges there's two things you need to know one is stress one is strain then we only come to young's what is a young's modulus so first we're going to look at what does it mean to stress a material okay humans we know oh you go exam very stress exam why is there stress for exam because there's pressure pressure from yourself pressure from your parents pressure from somewhere very similarly for materials stress is somewhat related to pressure stress if you if you ever need to define it in a levels is the force per unit area it's very similar to pressure like eh pressure is force per unit area stress is also force per unit area you can think of it as the same thing stress pressure stress pressure so stress you will often see people use the symbol sigma so sigma looks like this this is the greek letter for i think it's s sigma la, sigma okay sigma is stress force per unit area basically is force divided by area and this is the how people uh, the formula how people define stress of a material or more accurately i should say how much stress is this material experiencing for example if i have this uh, this wire that I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and I see it this big. If I'm trying to apply a compressive force, so the same force, and this is compressive, so I should say compressive. This poor material is having stress. Wow, oh, very stressed. I've got this thing pressing me here, pressing me there. So that is what we call the stress, and we can calculate it. What is A? A here will be the cross section area of the material. Here, this shaded one, and down there also got one. If it's a round pipe like this, then your cross section area will be pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. Okay. What if you have something that is stretching instead, like this? These are these kind of forces are what we call tensile forces. Tensile forces in the previous chapter we call them tension and we say oh it's t yeah it's the same thing different names now more fancy so tension is tensile forces compressive forces we call compress compressive forces uh. so the similarity with pressure is that in the pressure chapter we look at how you are pressing so pressure is only for the compressor one but now we want to include what if it's a tensile force as well we can't really call it pressure. We can't really we can call it tension, but then compression is something else. So let's call it stress. Okay? Standardized stress is that force, whether it's compression or tension, I don't care. The force divided by how much is the area where this force is acting on. And that is stress. So what is the unit for stress? Force is newton. Divide by area, meter squared. So this is the unit for uh, stress is the same as pressure, oh, Newton per meter square. Yes, Newton per meter square is also pressure. So you could also see people express stress in terms of Pascal. This is for uh, pressure. La. Pascal's is pressure from chapter 5. So here are two units for it. Just remember, stress is asking how much force is this area experiencing. The second thing you need to know is strain. So you got a stress on you so what is the strain strain basically is related to how much is the length changing remember we only worry about one dimension so here's strain you want to define it as the change in length per unit original length along the direction of stress basically saying it must be one direction so we look at this same pipe if we have the compression force like before one on top, one at the bottom. Okay, because of that stress, this object will experience a strain. What does the strain mean? So if I squash it, it's gonna get shorter. Squash in any ma. So here there's a change in length. I call this X. You may see people call it extension. Some people call it E in the textbook. It's the same thing. So from the original length, I'll call this L0. 
origin leg is from here to here. So the knee become may become shorter. So here we define strain. If you want to create an equation, we use the Greek alphabet sigma. I know sigma epsilon. Sigma is now epsilon is the e. Or sometimes you may see people write in textbooks e like this. It's the same uh, different variation, same thing. So sigma is we want to find how much is the change in length. Okay, so we got a change in length. But we also want to know the original length. So you can account for all kinds of materials. Okay, so we have a change in length over original length. This is basically a ratio. Change over original. Ratio, ma. So this is a ratio which has no units because the top is, is meters, bottom also meter. Means unit. What's the unit? No unit. Because it's a ratio. However, sometimes you may see people, instead of expressing as a ratio, you will see them express as a percentage. Percentage basically means what is the strain in the percentage. So you just do X over L times 100%. That's just the same thing, okay? Percentage is a ratio. Anyway, so that's if you compress something and it shrink by a certain length. What if you stretch something? you apply a tensile force, now it's tensile, or aka tension, what's going to happen to the material? You pull it, it gets longer. So there is still a change in length, but it gets longer now. Okay. So here you will still have another strain, it will be another x value. Honest, uh, you don't have to worry about whether it's a negative or positive strain. No, no, no. It's just change in length, original length. That's all we want to know. Okay. So strain is, remember, change in length. It's a ratio. Also can be expressed as a percentage. So it has no unit. Huh? Ratio and percentage is no unit. So those are the two building blocks that we need to know before we go to the Young's modulus. Now, finally, Young's modulus. What is it? Huh? So you stress something, then it will start to strain. This means change in length. And if there's a way to measure how objects stress and strain, then that is what we call the Young's modulus. So Young's modulus is a ratio of stress over strain. Young's modulus, we use the alphabet E. So uh, E will be stress over strain. So if you apply a stress to object, it will change shape. And I want to know what's, the, what's that ratio. Okay, so it doesn't matter, is it a square cylinder, is it a block, all kinds of different ideas will come out, but it's the same idea. Stress over strain. Now, if you want to expand on this a little bit, this is the, by the way, this is the mother equation. Let's expand on this a little bit. What's the unit of this thing? Well, unit will be stress divided by strain. Stress, we say, was Pascal. Divide by strain. Strain no unit or uh, so this is just Pascal also. So then Young's will just have the same units as stress. It's just Pascal's or if you want to use Newton per meter square. There's another form of this Young's modulus. If we sub in everything we know about stress and strain, okay, stress was force per unit area, strain was change in length over original length. If we sub everything we know about the stress and strain, then we can create an extended version of the Young's modulus, which is F over A uh, times L0 over X. This is the extended version, if you need to calculate things quicker. Same unit, still Pascal's. Okay? So remember, stress strain, Young modulus, and this is how we calculate Young modulus of a material. Specific for each material, remember, ah, uh, Metal got metal, copper got copper, ceramic, ceramic, glass is glass, things like that. One thing you need to know, give you a heads up, we'll have a whole unit on this later, is the graph. What if we plot a graph of stress over strain? How would it look like? Well, it can have many shapes, but if it is a straight line, the straight line region is the one where you can use it to find the Young's modulus. Why? Ah? How? Well, here's the fun part. Uh, 
the gradient of this straight line graph is what? Ah? Gradient is the y over x. Or usually you say delta y, delta x. So that would be, oh, that would be basically a stress over strain. So if you have a straight line graph of stress against strain, then the Young's modulus is the gradient. Young's modulus equals to gradient. I just do M, la, gradient. So if you need to find Young's modulus, gradient. La. Then if you have some other graph, which is higher gradient, so this one is a higher Young's modulus. This one is lower Young's modulus. Another quick heads up, and this is a sneak peek of the future one. La. If you want to find the area under this curve, is there any significant quantity for it? Well, I'll give you a spoiler for a future chapter, a future section. Basically, if you have our good old force against extension graph, area under the graph is energy, uh, elastic potential energy, right? So here, this area is the elastic energy or elastic potential energy per unit volume this is important per unit volume why is it so oh we will look in the next video okay so this is a heads up a big picture of what the young modulus is and how to understand its graph let's look at an example of a strain in a wire this is on page 11 looks like very short is it is simple let's try and see so you have a wire of a final length after its strain. What is the original length of the wire? Hmm. So you have some original wire. I'll call this L0. La. Okay. Then now you apply a force on both ends, you pull it. Ugh. Or you could be pushing it. But for wire, usually you pull. Ah. So you pull it. Ugh. Then you extend. Become longer already. And now you have the total length of this wire, which is the original length plus the extension that just happened. Because it grow longer. Ma. So it says they undergrow a strain of 200%. How do you find the original length? The strain. Whenever you see the word strain, don't panic. Write down the equation first. What is the strain? Stress strain. Strain is this one extension over length now how do we proceed from here pause the video if you need more time to try this out on page uh, 11 if you have the if you printed it out but if not think about how you can use this strain equation to find the original length okay remember i mentioned strain can also be a percentage because if i write it in this form this is the ratio oh, ah, why did i just cancel everything this is the ratio but if I convert to a percentage, I multiply by 100%, then this is the strain percentage. A strain in terms of percent. Ah. So I could use the information they give me. So if it's strained by 200%, means this. Uh, let me simplify a bit. So 200 divided by 100 is just 2 times. So now the ratio is 2 times. But what is X and what is L0? Ah, I need more information. Ah, look at the right side. There's a way to relate L, L0 and X. How? They gave us the information of final wire, final length. This is basically L. Final length is 6, C, uh, six meters. So I can say the final length, L, is the original length plus some extension because it get longer, right? And this L is 6 cm. Initial and extension. I don't know these values, but never mind, I can plug it in. So let's plug it in. 2 equals to x. Let's, 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 let's just plug in for, uh, what do you find? Original length. So let's plug in x. So x here will be 6 cm minus L0. Aha! Now I only have one unknown in the equation, so I can solve it out. So if I rearrange, this will be 2L0 equals to 6 minus L0. 
which gives me next line 3L0 equals to 6CM so L0 equals to 2CM did I say CM? what did I say CM? everything's in meter no CM, no CM meter, meter so in the end you can find the original length now the thing for this kind of question that makes it a bit strange is the percentage just remember strain is a percent it can be a percentage and remember uh, for any final length is basically the original plus how much it extended let's look at another example a little bit related more to stress stress of a bolt so this is what we call a bolt you will see it in walls cabinets doors things like that basically the whole stuff together a bolt is subject to a tensile force so tensile means pulling stretching so pull on both sides this bolt has a circular cross section circular is an important clue what is the ratio of stress at y over stress at x wow how to solve pause the video if you need if you want to try it out and see if you can figure out how to solve this this is on page 15 if you want to try it out on a handout or printed page so page 15 stress at y and stress at x means there's a stress on this side and there's another stress on this side and they are different because why why is it different if you apply the same force the area is different so they have a different stress that they experience. Hmm. I see. I see. So how do you so how do you find ratio problems? Also, a heads up. These are what we call ratio problems. Something divided by something. You just find both separately if you can. So stress at x is the force per unit area. Force. We don't know what is it. Let's just call it F. Tensile force F. Area. Well, imagine the bolt has a circular cross section. That's why they told us this. Meaning, if you think of area of a circle now, area of a circle is pi r square. Or if you want to think of diameters, pi d over 2 square. So, okay, let's try that out. So, force over area is pi, I want to use radius, so d is the radius, so pi d square. And I'm kind of stuck because I don't know anything else. Don't worry about it. Continue on first. So now the stress at X is done. Stress at Y will be a little different. Do you think the stress will be bigger or smaller? Actually, the stress uh, is bigger because now the area is smaller already. Man. But we'll see how, how much smaller later. So we have the same force applied over a smaller area now. So that will be pi times oh, D over 2. Okay, so D over 2 square that will be if i square square that will be 4f over pi d square so now what you found both stresses independently well you need to do a ratio so let's find the ratio of stress at y divided by stress at x so we put everything together 4f over pi d square divided by uh, f over pi d squared now if you can work this out in your mind very quickly and see what cancels out sure but if not you can also take out the fraction from the bottom and get 4f over pi d squared multiply by if you take out the bottom you will have pi d squared over f this is called taking out the fraction from the bottom and here you can see more clearly which one cancel out with what so here, pi d, pi d cancel out, f and f cancel out. What's left? 4. 4. Correct or not? Yes, 4. So here you have a 4, which is the ratio of 1 to the other. And that means that um, the force, oh, not force, although they have the same force pulling on both ends, the right end will experience a bigger stress because of the smaller area okay so that what it means for stress now the final question of the day before we end the video is about our stress strain and young modulus all wrapped into one now before this you know you notice how there's a lot of ratio ratio kind of questions 
like you say oh given given these values play around with the equation see what you get now this one is example of a rare question where you kind of use actual data to calculate it happens once in a while but i thought it was interesting so data for a steel wire on the guitar are listed the wire snaps and contracts assume that the wire obey hook's law by what percentage does the length of wire uh, contract so it's something like a guitar here that i have well let me turn off the background a bit so it doesn't remove the guitar there we go so guitar strings are very finicky especially the thinner ones and actually it applies for all kinds of instruments like violins and they always have uh, problems with strings breaking and it's pretty much like young modulus here so what's happening is if let's say i'm tuning a guitar oh that's out of tune so i need to tighten the string and i turn the knobs up here and i make it tighter so you hear the key 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 and it gets higher higher pitch tune because i'm making it tighter i'm exerting more tensile forces on the string so it's getting very tense high force it's still still not in tune okay, wait, huh? hmm. i think it sounds in tune now oh my goodness those sounds get me every time you see the key 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 People have uh, trauma trying to tune instruments because it will suddenly break on them and pia, kind of whips their fingers. So what's happening is very similar in this question. You got some steel strings and suddenly if it breaks, it has 20, let's say 20 Newton acting on this string. And if it suddenly breaks, it's going to contract back to its original length. But now it's a little bit stretched because I've been exerting a force on this string. Thankfully, this string didn't break. Otherwise, I would have to get some get some guitar strings from who knows where during this period okay so let's try this out try this out here um pause the video if you haven't try out the question and see if you can figure out the length of the wire that how much length contracted after it breaks and goes back to original shape Ah, by the way, this is on page 16. I forgot to mention earlier. But if you already found it, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> so here, lots of stuff to think about. Let's try this. So whenever you see the word contract, Hooke's law, percentage, Young's modulus, make sure you write down what is Young's modulus equation. So Young's modulus is stress over strain. Stress over strain. Okay, so what information is given to us? The wire snaps and contracts elastically. Assume, oh, assume the wire obeys Hooke's law. It's basically telling you, if you have a graph, if it obeys Hooke's law, then it's like kind of linear like that. And you can say the same for if FX graph or a stress over strain graph. So it's in the straight line region. So yes, you can count your Young's modulus. Okay, good. We can use our values. So E. Young's modulus, not energy, ah. this E here means Young's modulus. I know there's a lot of E. There's actually at least two more to come. So E here will be uh, stress, which is force per unit area, divided by strain, uh, change in length per original length. Oh, we don't know that. Anyway, this is maybe a strain for now to keep it a little cleaner. So force per unit area. Force here is the tensile force, tension, aka tension pulling it apart so that's 20 newtons divide by area i'm going to move the area down there so area will be pi uh pi r square times the strain okay what is the pi r square here so we write the next line we sub in all the values we know young's modulus is given to us 2 times 10 to the 11 pascals equals to all this stuff on the right side 20 over pi radius is what ah? diameter divided by half so okay it's a lot of stuff to write diameter 10 to the negative 4 divide by half now it's in meters square times the strain
strain. So we find the strain, you do some calculator work. 2 times 10 to the 11. Wait, 20 divided by 2 times 10 to the 11. Divided by pi. What else is down there? Diameter. 5 times 10, negative 4. Divided by 2. Square. And that <coughs> will give me a very small number. Let's write it out. 5.1 times 10 to the negative 4. That is our strain. It gives us information of how much the wire will contract or expand. But in this case, it's contract. How much the wire will contract. Now, if you say, oh, I found the answer, it is B. No, 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 no. Pause there. Wait. This is still in a ratio. Means change in length over original length. But they want percentage. So be careful. Percentage. So you need to find the percentage. Okay, so you know, E. I put the... You won't see the mark scheme write E percentage, but I write it that way to differentiate a bit like, oh, if you write E percentage means strain in percentage instead of ratio. So E percentage, you need to do multiply by 100% to convert it to a percentage. So multiply 100%, you get 5.1 times 10 to the negative 2%. So, uh-oh, don't choose B. Choose D. That is the answer in percentage. Okay, quick recap. E is change in length over original length. It's a ratio. If you want to express it in percentage, you just need to multiply by 100. Okay, so you'll say maybe 20%, 30%, something like that. Okay, so that's how you can think about uh, Young's modulus. Uh, go and try out all the questions down below in the description. Wow, they tend to repeat a lot. So if you do, 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 and you're like, oh, I kind of know the pattern of question, then you'll be fine. Uh, a lot of the Young's modulus question will be algebra. So they'll give you like equation. Now, what is the equation? Equation. So don't panic if you don't have exact values to plug in your calculator. Just write the equations, plug together, find the ratios like what we did in these few questions. So here's a summary of all we've looked at today. Firstly, we upgraded our knowledge on the spring constant. We also call it spring elastic constant, also force constant, K. K is a stiffness of a particular object. So this spring have a certain K. Another spring got another K. But it will tell you about how your object will deform with force. But now we have upgraded with the young modulus. We can look at materials. If it's a metal spring here with a metal spring different shape, it will still have the same young modulus because it's metal. So this Young's modulus, we use the alphabet E, and that's how we measure stiffness. So we also looked at two ideas that kind of form the Young modulus. First one is what we call stress. Like how you are under stress, then you will strain. And that is the bottom one, strain. Stress has a unit of pascals parallel to pressure. Okay, very similar. But pressure previously, we only look at squashing. Now strain is squash and stretch. Strain. Did I say strain? Stress is squash and stretch. Strain has no unit. It's just a ratio of lengths, change in length. And if you put these two together, even a ratio of them, then you get what we call the Young's modulus, which also can be expanded in terms of F over A, L over X. And this is Young's modulus. Okay, so this is the whole idea of the Young's modulus. Lastly, in terms of graphs, if we have stress over strain graph in a straight line, if it's a straight line proportional, good obeys Hooke's law, and you can find the gradient, which is the Young's modulus of this graph. If you obey Hooke's law, it's in a straight line. In the coming units, we will be looking at an experiment that can help us find the Young's modulus of any or pretty much almost any stringy material like your hair or a wire or a guitar string. Um, and we will also look at graphs, specifically what happens when you go beyond this limit. Weird stuff happens, it's very cute. Uh, so things we do like that, like who knows what the graph looks like. We'll save that for our next unit. But for now, this is Young's Modulus. Remember the basics, go try some questions and I'll see you in the next video.